Welcome back in the Cheapo Spotlight today, the all new OW16A Cheapo True RMS Multimeter from Oan. This one has lots of different bells and whistles. Let's take a look. Now the 16A does have a sibling, the 16B, which is its big brother. The 16B boasts data logging and Bluetooth capability. And guess what? That's what I ordered, but they sent me this one instead. So without further ado, we're gonna take a look at the Bluetooth-less version. Gosh, I just hate losing my Bluetooth. Uh, no, my, my Bluetooth, not my, not my tooth. My teeth are okay. Now in the world of Owan, they do have lots of different meters. This is the first Owan I have reviewed, and let's hope I come out of this with a happy smile on my face. Or something on my face. Now the meter itself is kind of stylish. I like the way it looks. It is uh, not a big multimeter, and um, you know, not really a tiny multimeter either. Let's say if I put it up against the UT191T, for example, it looks really tiny. And the 191T is not really a big multimeter. It's big enough. But as you can see, if we compare it against another recently reviewed UT33D+, it's a little more par for the course. In fact, it is just slightly bigger than that Unity on the right. So size-wise, um, definitely not a big meter, and really it's not a small meter. Now, I want to talk about a small meter. That is a small meter, but that was a different review. So what do you get in the box? Let's take a look. Ships in a nice, sturdy, generic brown vanilla box. Starting off with the thermocouple, because yes, it does do temperature in both Celsius and Fahrenheit. Good stuff. Also, Awan gives you a nice, they call it a quick guide, and it's a little more in-depth than that. Um, pictures, and anyway, some really decent information, all in a really nice, clean, concise little package. So, once again, good job. They also give you a quick sheet, or a spec sheet, and it's really nothing more than a quick detailed look at the specs, but once again, I like it. You get your generic style probes. We're seeing these probes everywhere in the cheapo realm. They are all over the place. They're all the same. You've seen one, you've seen them all. Hey, better than nothing. And another probe. Wow. So I got two for the price of one. Finally, I have a screwdriver, a tiny little Phillips, and hey, can't complain. Let's take a look at the meter. In the hands, the OW16A has a really nice feel. Um, not a heavy meter, but you know, not light either. Just overall decent in the hand. I like it. And also the holster has a really nice quality, probably a step above your standard, typical uh, PVC style holster, but um, all in all, does a really nice job. On the back, as you can see, we've got that nice wide standing bail, and it is fairly simple to pull out, no struggle in here. Probably not meant for one-handed operation, but um, I got no complaints about that standing bail. Overall, fit finish, I'd say it's top notch, especially for the cheapo zone. Um, yeah, really liking this holster once again. It feels really nice. You do have the probe holders here, and generally speaking, quite impressed. Let's take a closer look at that selector switch. Starting off at the 9 o'clock position, we have the off, followed by volts AC DC, continuity, resistance, and diode. Capacitance, frequency, temperature in both Celsius and Fahrenheit, NCV or non contact voltage detection. Finally, in current mode with microamps ACDC, milliamps ACDC. Finally, high current amps ACDC. Four soft buttons on the top the select, the range, the backlight and hold feature, as well as your frequency and duty cycle. We also have a rel feature on that same triage. Finally, on the top of the unit, we do have a nice LED indicator, which you will see in action shortly. So let's turn on the OW16A. Right away, we get the LED indicator at the top. 
one bleep tells us we are good to go. And look at that display, very different, you know? First thing when I turned this on, it was like, wow, I'm getting a Sanwa feel. The digits are slender, um, almost italicized, but definitely um, not your typical font. I like it, I like it a lot. Now when I say Sanwa look and feel, this is what I'm talking about. The digits um, LCD wise and a lot of the Sanwa meters are more um, slender, uh, geez, what is the word I'm trying to find here? Just generally um, lighter looking. They seem to float on the screen as opposed to something bold and big like a lot of the uh, LCD displays. Anyway, long story short, I really like the look and feel of this LCD display. To turn that backlight on, simply depress on the button and you are in backlight mode. Turn the light down and as you can see, Generally speaking, it looks really good. We do have that LED bleeding at the bottom on both sides, but overall, I like it. The meter shares its milliamp range with the rest of the system. So you're sharing your milliamps along with your volts, resistance, continuity, diode, temperature, frequency, etc. The high current range has its own input on the 10 amp side of things. And if we take a look, it is fused with the 10 amp as well, we have a 600 milliamp on the milliamp side. Starting things off, we are in low voltage mode. We're gonna see 250 millivolts and pretty close at 249. Now let's see if we can get 2.5 spot on. Here we go. Hey, look at that, 2.500. Doesn't get any better than that. Up next, we're gonna do a voltage comparison between the Mastec TM91A and the OW16A. First of all, if we look at that display, yeah, that's what I'm talking about in terms of the actual font size. So this is quite um, normal for LCD displays, this sort of chunky, bold font, what have you, and completely nothing wrong with it. It, it looks fine. But in stark contrast to the 16A, you can see that uh, this just has a much lighter overall look and feel. All right, enough of the display. Let's get down to busyness. It is voltage time. Got the DC power supply out. I'm gonna start things off at 2.3 volts. 2.3 across the board. Here we go, taking it up to 3.6 volts. 3.62 for the Mestec, 3.62 for the 16A. Higher we go, 5.4 volts now, 5.41 versus 5.43. 5 Let's hit 10 volts even, Steven, if we can. There we go, 10.0 according to the power supply. 10.02 and 10.02 spot on neck and neck. Liking what I see, taking it up, up and away. Gonna hit 20 volts, 20 spot on. 20.01 and 20.01, look at that guys. They are neck and neck, up and away. We're gonna max it out now, up to 29 volts. 28.96 and 28.96, it does not get any closer than that, exactly. Now, neither of these meters has a, a digital bar graph, but uh, nonetheless, I'm gonna start just going back and forth with the voltage and just see what their look, their, uh, how they compare in terms of a refresh rate. So there you go. Mm, wow, for me, honestly, too close to call. Uh, I'd say neck and neck. Diode mode is next. Here we go. Let's see if we can light up all five of these LEDs. Alrighty, starting off with the yellow. Here we do have illumination and we have the LED readout, the LCD readout rather. Same with the green, it is illuminating and there is the forward voltage drop coming up to the red LED. Shouldn't be a problem and it's not. Over to the blue, 2.5. Finally, the white LED, will we do five for five? And yes, we do. Awesome, good show. I am I like it. Once again, in dial mode, I mustn't forget our standard dials. I've been told a few times, so let's 
make sure that we have no issues here and we are good to go. In diode mode, the output voltage is a decent 3.24 volts. Next up is resistance mode. Now this is a meter of sixes. Yes, let me tell you, we've got 60 mega ohm for the resistance, 60 millifarad for capacitance, and let's not forget this is a, you guessed it, 6,000 count multimeter. Booyah. All right, right now we're sitting at 5.888 in the resistance mode. And sure enough, 5.89 mega ohm doesn't get much closer than that. Take up to 6.88, hey, no worries there. Let's take it down, 2.88. Looking good. Next up, let's just verify if there's any resistance in those leads. Wow, there is about point, point 0.3 ohm. Now this does have a rel feature right here on the multimeter. We have railed out those leads and let's try it again. There we are, spot on. Always nice to have that rail feature in those cheap old multimeters. You guessed it, continuity is next. We've got the continuity indicator at the top right of the display. Starting off with the stock leads, see if they're any good. Here we go. Now we have that visual indicator at the top. Unfortunately, with the stock leads, it is really, really painfully slow. All right, let's try the probe master. Here we go. Unfortunately, still slow, a little bit louder. It is latched, but it is still on the slow side, even with the probe masters. Seventy-eight point nine decibels, the maximum output volume in continuity mode. In capacitance mode, now we're going to start off with a 0 0.01 microfarad cap, and there we are. Ten, just over ten nanofarad. Spot on. Okay, we're going to move up to the big boys. Yeah. Now this does have a 60 millifarad capacitance range. We are gonna start things off with 10,000. In the little cheat sheet that they give you, they do give a stipulation here saying the following. The measuring capacitance for the 60 millifarad range, the measuring duration should be over 30 seconds, right there in black and white, folks. So that's for a 60 millifarad cap. So I'm assuming here, we should get this probably three to five seconds. Let's find out. Here we go. 10 millifarad is what we want to see. Definitely longer than five seconds. And wow, spot on, 9.99. It took about what, 12, 15 seconds? Okay. 47 millifarad, here we come. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang, we are in action in the microfarad range. Now in the millifarad range, it is thinking, it is thinking, gonna get us close to 47,000 microfarad. Yes, 44.14 millifarad, close enough. Okay, without further ado, you know what? Yeah, you know it's gonna happen. 100,000 big ones. Let's see, are we gonna have a party? Here we go. Alrighty, we're trying to exceed the limit by 40 millifarad, that's a lot. I don't know if it's gonna work. Haven't tried this. Your guess is as good as mine. And, oh, we are, oh well, yeah, out of luck. Dang, we tried. Next up is high voltage. Put those safety goggles on. Let's rack up the volts over a thousand. Here we go. Three, two, one. And 
over volt. We have that nice audible alarm as well as the visual and it doesn't look like there was any problem. Try it out one more time. Here we go. Over a thousand volts and that O1 handles it without a hiccup. Frequency is next. Now remember the OW16A goes up to 10 megahertz, 9.999 megahertz. Well, right now we are sitting at 139 kilohertz. Here we go. Take it up. Just over one megahertz right now and no worries there. Two point two megahertz, looking good. Three point four megahertz, yeah. Three point four three nine to be exact, and yeah, we are spot on. Four point nine three eight megahertz, and there you go. Okay, I've switched to a sine wave. We're now sitting at 6.939 megahertz. And there we go, 6.938. Awesome. Remember, this is capable of 9.999 megahertz. So here we go. 8.9, 8.937. Showing up as 8.939 on the function waveform generator. 9.939, 9.93, hey, perfect. And that is it, that is as high as I can go on this generator. So looking good in terms of frequency. We're currently in temperature mode. Now I brought up the Unity UT191T. Both of these meters are capable of measuring both Celsius as well as Fahrenheit. So let's see what the offset is between them and see how close or not so close they are. Right now in the lab, according to the OWAN, we're sitting at around 19 degrees Celsius. And the Unity is saying 17.6. So honestly, not that far off. In fact, the O1 is coming down a bit now. It's saying 18. Oh, seems to be fluttering back between 18 and 19. So really, fairly close. Um, I'm not really too worried about that. Now let's change into Fahrenheit. 64.2 degrees Fahrenheit and 66 degrees Fahrenheit. So less than two degrees, not a big deal. Now I'm utilizing the same thermocouple that was in the Elon box. It came with two instead of one. So I'm utilizing the exact same thermocouple in each multimeter. So trying to make it as fair and square as possible. So what I've done is I've taken out a couple of different thermocouples. And we're sitting at 67 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm curious if we replace the stock thermocouple with another one, are we going to have the same reading? Right now it's on hold, and I've got that backwards. Alrighty, so right now it is saying 67 from the previous thermocouple. Let us... Take it off hold and see if it's going to stay at 67. Sixty-eight. So really not a big differential. In fact, now it's back. To, well, okay, it's fluttering again. So 67 to 68. Basically, no difference. Put it on hold. Let's try that one more time. Another K-type. Here we go, I'm going to take it off hold. And yeah, really no difference. So it really doesn't matter what type of thermocouple you're using, you're going to get the same reading. 
I really like the way this thermocouple matches the boot. Whoa! Talk about going out in style. So far, pretty impressed with this little Oan. I believe this is the cheapest of the Oan meters you can get right now. I mean, we're talking about 20 bucks. So yeah, hard to get an Oan for much cheaper than that. So, so far, incredible bang. Next up is NCV or non-contact voltage detection. Here we go. Simply put the meter into NCV mode. That's it, that's all. No button to depress. You are ready for action. Try it again on an outlet. So definitely not the most sensitive NCV out there. Eh, I'd say it works. Something else worth mentioning is that rotary selector switch. It is really nice has a, a nice feel, perhaps a wee bit on the small side, but that being said, very, very nice. Okay, currently we're in milliamp mode. Now remember this is capable of 600 milliamps. Now this does not have one of those resettable fuses. So if you go over the threshold by too much, you're gonna have to replace that fuse. Okay, setting at 180 milliamps, coming up as 186. Two hundred and seventy, three hundred and twenty six, up to four hundred and thirty, forty, five hundred and fifty milliamp. We're going to push that threshold and we are over limit. Bring it back down to five hundred and ninety five and we are good. Finally, to go. bolts AC sitting at one hundred and twenty volts, sixty hertz. Back of the meter, we have two Duracells. That's right, it takes two AA batteries, and we have a nice brass threaded insert. Let's take this baby apart. Here we go. Here we are on the inside of our little O1, and it actually puts a smile on my face. Yeah, this is a cheap old meter, folks. Remember that, but what do we see here? They actually paid some attention to the little things. Starting off with the current shunt, nice size current shunt, and um, look at those input jacks. They are the split variety, but they are soldered in there very nicely and they are held in place by the back support of the back of the chassis. Speaking of the back of the chassis, unfortunately there is no shielding. We have a one ohm current shunt resistor right here. Very nice touch. This is on the high current not side of full things. Full size fuse, uh, a little smaller than your average, but nonetheless it is not one of those ridiculously uh, mini type varieties. Um, good to see nonetheless. On the milliamp side of things, we have a 600 milliamp ceramic fuse again. And on the voltage side, we also have a couple of PTCs over here. Once again, that is on the voltage side of things. Here we have a, a bridge rectifier. Now remember this meter is also Bluetooth capable. This is where the Bluetooth module would reside if it was the other version. So in this case, it is an empty slot. Over here, we have the battery terminal connectors. And we have our crystal oscillator as well as the speaker. Look at that, the IC is not cobbed. That is correct. It is a Hycon HY12P66. Feeding the IC, all that good information is our EEP ROM right here. That's the 24C02A. We see that a lot in these multimeters today. Excellent EEP ROM. Here's our tin can, AKA the crystal oscillator. And on top of that, what is that? Any guesses? Anybody? Take a good look. 
That is our NCV, the non-contact voltage detector. It is embedded into the... I was talking about the quality of the solder. Take a look. That is some really good soldering. Nice big blobs. And they're definitely embedded into that PCB. Good, good quality control there. I like what I see. We even have a few nice isolation slots underneath the high current fuse and current input. My only real gripe inside is the uh, fake NCV tower at the top, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, really, it serves no purpose because there is no filament coming out, extruding or protruding. It is embedded into the BCB, so why pretend there's something there when there isn't? Closing thoughts on the Olan OW16A. Hey, this is a cheapo multimeter worth its weight. If you haven't got one, go get one. It's a great little value, a great, great meter. Hey, this was like 20 bucks Canadian. How can you go wrong at that price? Compared to its bigger brother, the OW18B, which has Bluetooth capability, this one is a real deal. Yeah, the 16B is out there for literally, oh, close to half the price of the 18B. Now, on its merits alone, the 16A, excellent, excellent multimeter, great ranges, great, great build quality, nothing bad to say about this meter. The price is right. The OW16A gets a solid four, Five stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Keep those comments coming in. I love them all. Good or bad, it's all good to me. And without my subscribers, that's you guys, I wouldn't be anywhere at all. Thanks for everybody, for all your support. Lots more great videos coming around. Till the next time, keep on testing.